today we're gonna have a little bit of a different video because we're talking about a couple patterns that are living right free in my head. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel by Emwu. I'm Emwu, aka Marianne. And like the title says, we're gonna be talking about a handful of patterns that have been kind of living in my head for the last couple months that I've been itching to do, uh, but we have a little bit of a time restraint because <laughs> I only have so much time in the day. So instead of maybe working on them, I'm gonna dedicate some time to introduce them to the world and so maybe they can live in your head. We have seven patterns to talk about today and they kind of range from dresses to shirts to shorts to accessories. Um, they're in no particular order and I'm just gonna get straight into it. If I'm looking to the side, it's because I have my iPad here, but pattern number one is the Melidi's Dress by Ines Olivri Olivria? Olivria. Oh, Olivria. Something like that. I'm gonna put all the names on the screen as well as in the description as always. But it's this beautiful reversible dress that is like scream summer to me. Um, in the pattern and in the images that are on her pattern page, she has them knit to this midi length uh, dress right underneath the knees and it's like the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. I really want to make this one. But okay, before we get into that, um, like I said, it's a reversible dress. So the front or one side of it is a v-neck style dress with buttons along the front and the other side is a scoop neck uh, version of it. And essentially, this is a made to fit pattern, meaning that it doesn't really come with set sizes and you, from what I understand, use your body measurements to be inputted into some sort of calculator. And that gives you the details in terms of how many stitches you need to do at each specific step. I have not knit this for myself, so I'm not entirely sure what it comes with, but this pattern was kind of introduced to me by Amanda or Mandy from Knits by Mandy, and she is currently going on a journey of knitting this dress. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about the process, it's a paid for pattern, so she's keeping some things out for obvious reasons, but her journey as well as, like I'm following along very intently because I'm curious to see this beautiful dress be knit up. So this pattern is knit up or recommended to be knit up in fingering weight yarn. The suggested yarn that the pattern recommends is I believe knitting for olive pure silk. I've never really worked with this, but I've heard a really good things in terms of how knitting for olive pure silk knits up. It, apparently makes this beautiful like drapey fabric that I can only imagine is like amazing for the summer because silk is such an amazing fiber for the summer. I do have some knitting for all of pure silk for another shirt that I want to make so maybe when I knit that shirt up it will give me a direction on if I ever do want to pursue this dress. This dress is as evident by its length looks like a lot of knitting so it looks like a pretty big dedication project but I think it's a beautiful dress. The pattern claims that it was inspired by like sewing techniques. So like the concept of darts and the way that um, like sewn pieces are made to make it really flattering. And I think from all of the photos that are on the pattern as well as some of the projects that are showcased on Ravelry, I think it's a beautiful pattern. It seems to be really versatile in terms of the fit which is really promising. I would be really excited to make for her. I think for me right now, it's the time commitment on this dress as well as the fact that I have so many other projects that I won't be pursuing this anytime soon, but definitely been living rent free in my head ever since I heard about it because it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. Project number two is the Luna Tea by Kasara? Carissa, I think. I'm, I think I mentioned this in the past, I'm really bad with names, and I think this is showing. But <laughs> this one is a beautiful t-shirt with like, I wanna say, what is this length sleeve called? Like one third length sleeves? I don't know, is that a thing? Um, it's knit up in broken rib in a raglan shape, 
And although the pattern actually says that this would be a perfect top for a fall piece, I still think it would be an amazing top for summer, possibly contingent on the type of yarn that you use. Because it has like a mock neck, I can see a lot of people maybe claiming it's not as summer friendly, uh, but I think in the right fabric, uh, depending on where you live and your preferences, it would be a really nice summer shirt as well. I know I would definitely wear something like that in the summer, but I run very cold, so a mock neck isn't concerning to me, but maybe someone who runs a little warmer or doesn't like a lot of things closer to the neck in the summertime would kind of lean away from this. So this is a fingering weight pattern with the recommended needle size of four millimeter needles. The pattern comes in sizes ranging from one to 14, which corresponds to the finished garment having a bust measurement from 71 to 153 centimeters approximately. It has a pretty big size range. It does make a claim that only sizes 1 to 7 have been tested. So if you are interested in doing a larger size, uh, she actually recommends you contact her to kind of make an agreement to kind of do that test knit together. As I mentioned, it's in this beautiful broken rib pattern. The photo that she uses as the patterns, like cover photo is she made it in this really beautiful cream white color. This pattern has been living in my head since probably I started knitting. I think I found this pattern like months and months ago back in the winter time and I was like I know one day I want to make it. I do have plans to make it and I did buy yarn to do it. I have plans to do it in the Malabrio Ultimate Sock yarn in the color Pearl. And it's this really pretty like gray purpley color but i think it would look really nice in terms of like a not white but not obnoxious shirt color and especially because the way she has it styled she does has it with a pair of trousers in the photo i think it would be like a lovely lovely shirt for like work for example so this shirt is designed for zero to five centimeters of negative ease but the Ravelry page mentions that you have the ability to tailor it a little bit and make it not as form-fitting if that's not something that suits you uh, but yeah like I said have plans to knit this maybe I'll show up in one of my podcast videos down the line as I said I do have the yarn I just don't have the time which will be a common trend because all of these I want to make but I don't have the time for any of them even the one that I've planned for. Anyways, that, that's neither here nor there. Uh, quickly, this is a paid for pattern, just FYI. Pattern number three is the Dumpling Bag by Gina Lee. It was recently published in Pearl Soho, I believe, and they actually have a knit along going right now or the month of June. I'm not entirely sure how long it's going for or if it will still be running by the time this video goes up, but I did see it floating around my Instagram, which is kind of how this was introduced to me. So it's a free pattern on Ravelry, and it's for this really cute bag that I think screams kind of summery, but uh, realistically you could probably use it all year round. It's styled similarly to plastic shopping bags in the sense that it has like just a body and then two straps. Um, that the straps are asymmetrical. So it's this really cute way that you slide one strap into the other and so it's like a one strapped bag. I think it would be great for summer. I think it would be great specifically like if I was to make one, the use case would probably be like a knitting project bag. It's just so cute. Uh, but I'm sure you could use it for like a wide range of situations. And I think it would make a really cute gift if you were to ever pursue that, maybe in the winter time for Christmas or like a birthday. But regardless, it is recommended to be made in a linen DK weight yarn. The pattern specifically calls for the Pearl Soho Blackbird Linen. Never worked with that before. I haven't even heard anything about that yarn to be honest with you, but I'm sure any like plant-based fiber might work better for this because they seem to have a little bit more integrity than um, like a protein-based yarn. But this one is knit up in a bottom up construction. You start with a provisional cast on, knit it up, and then you add the straps to the live stitches at the end. I think it's the sweetest little bag. I really want to knit one. I probably would 
if I had like a work a yarn that would work well for this pattern in my stash, but I don't. It comes in one size and it's recommended to be knit on US 5 needles or 3.75 millimeter millimeter needles. Um, based off how it reads, it seems like it wouldn't use too, too much yarn. So if anybody knits this up, please let me know and encourage me to do so because it's so cute. Plus, I love the name, like the dumpling bag. I don't know if it's just like growing up. I think dumplings are just so cute. Like they're like just like a little pouch and I guess that like this bag is kind of that. <laughs> but it's a cute bag, highly recommend, even though I've never made it, the pattern seems really great. Um, and this one's a free one if I haven't mentioned yet, so really accessible if you're interested in that. Pattern number four is the Square Neck Cami by Helen Biba, I think is how you pronounce her last name, and it's this really cute square neck camisole with three by three ribbing along the front of it. It has really nice increases on the side and looks to fit like really, really well. It's like really simple, but really well executed, if that makes sense. It's recommended to be knit up in fingering weight yarn. The pattern recommends specifically Santa Scar and Sunday, but I think any light fingering weight yarn would work really well for it. Uh, it's recommended to be knit up on three millimeter needles, which are also US 2.5, I believe. This top is knit top down and it has a size range of extra small to extra large, which fits approximately a bust size of 31 inches to 47 ish inches. Um, this one was a really nice pattern, and I can say that because I made one. So, this is my square neck cami. I made this a couple months ago now, actually before the summer season even hit, spring, or not even in summer, before the spring season even hit. I made this back in March and it was my first like completed garment of the year. I knit this in Knitting for Olive Merino in the colorway Mushroom Rose. If you guys watched my last podcast, I mentioned that my like headscarf was made in Mushroom Rose and it was because I had an extra skein from this pattern. And so, like I said, it's a three by three camisole that has like a really clean fit, really classic fit. I love the way how this turned out and I wear it all the time under things specifically because it's like just the right amount of warmth without being too like clunky. Um, that being said, I do have a couple comments to make about this and I think it's less of a reflection of the pattern itself. So for context, I believe when the pattern came out, it was her first ever released pattern. And with that context, it was a really, really well written pattern. I think the only confusing part that I had when I was doing it was that this, the start of the straps is using a Judy magic cast on, I think is what it's called, where you have, you can work like your cast on from either side. So you have like a seamless. I couldn't figure it out. I ended up just doing like a normal cast on and just picking up stitches, which ended up working out fine. But because it's knit top down, I had the issue that I think a lot of people have with camisoles knit top down where the straps were kind of like a guesstimate in terms of length and they have now stretched out and are too long for me. So that's a little bit of something like if I was to redo this garment I would make the strap slightly shorter to accommodate for the stretched outness and then the other thing is I feel like it's more of a me problem than the pattern problem again is that I'm not a very busty person and so I think even when I knit the smallest size which was the extra small the shirt was like it fit really well pre-blocking and then post-blocking it still fit okay, but then as I've been wearing it, it's been getting bigger, it's been getting wider. And I tried to like block it with the ribbing like bunched up to kind of give it as much elasticity as elasticity as possible and it's still a little too big for me. Maybe it would have been mitigated if I did more like decreasing along the edge because it has like a wider top here and it does decrease a little bit. But I don't think so. I think I'm just not the right size for this garment. 
but I would definitely rate another one would highly recommend this pattern if you're interested it's actually a relatively quick knit all things considering and the knitting for olive was like a beautiful yarn to use I have used Santa Scar and Sunday now since I've made this and I also think that would be a great yarn to use as indicated by the recommendation of it but yeah only good things to say about this pattern even if the garment didn't turn out the way I wanted it I still love it enough that I would make another one and if anything it would just be better because I know what to expect uh, that was very rambly I will lastly mention that it is also available in Norwegian which I think was the original English came a little bit later and this pattern was introduced to me by uh, Florence from Handmade by Florence. She raved about it and I can understand why. Okay, before I ramble too much more about that, we're gonna move on to pattern number five. So pattern number five is jumping to a different type of shirt. This is the Summer Souffle by Laura Penrose. And I think that this pattern has been out for a while. I don't know if it had like a moment last summer, but when I saw this, I was like, yep, that shirt is going to haunt me <laughs> and it continues to haunt me. And honestly, the only reason why I haven't made it is just because I haven't been prioritizing it, which is a really bad excuse because I really want to make it. But this is a paid for pattern that is a pretty simple t-shirt made in with a circular yoke. But what makes this shirt so adorable is that it has this like ruffle across the bust and the shoulders or like the arm, top of the arms and it's the sweetest thing ever. It just screams whimsical summer. I just, I can see people wearing this on the beach, eating ice cream, like it's like the epitome of summer to me. Like I really want to make one. I feel like by the time I finish this it won't be till fall. So maybe this is like a first to do next summer on the, my project list. I also don't have the yarn for this, which is probably also why I'm not really working on it right now. This pattern calls for DK weight yarn. The original one was knit up in fingering weight held double. The recommended yarn is knitting for olive cotton merino, which two podcasts, or in my first podcast, I made a swatch for the anchor tee in knitting for olive cotton merino. And I can say that Seeing that swatch and thinking about this pattern, I can see why that's the suggested yarn. I think it would just make like the most beautiful shirt. So because it's on DK weight, it's recommended to be knit on US 6 or four mil size 4 millimeter needles. The pattern's actually a little interesting where it comes with two gauges. The first gauge is a 22 stitches on 28 rows and then the second one is a 20 stitch on 28 rows, which if I'm not mistaken, means that you can get a whole slew of sizes. So because the pattern has two gauges, the chest circumference size can range quite a bit. Um, based off the pattern, it says there's size 1 to 12, in which that if you're using the 22 stitch gauge, you have 78 centimeters to 163 centimeters bust, gauge, bust size, sorry. Or if you're using the 20 stitch gauge, that's an 86.5 centimeter to 179 centimeter bust size. So a lot of range for this one. And I think even if you didn't like the ruffle and you just made the plain circular yoke shirt, it would be like a really nice shirt. So this pattern has like a lot of range to it. Um, and I really wanna make one, which is seems to be the pattern in all of these, which makes sense because all of these have been living in my head, red free for so long. I feel like my enthusiasm for this shirt about just has, I, yeah, I, I don't even have words. I love this shirt. Can't wait to cast one on. Have no plans immediately. Got to work through some of my current work in progresses, but one day you guys will see this. I guarantee it because yeah, I think it's just the cutest shirt. Whew. Okay. Moving on to the last two. So the last two, um, one's a shirt, one's a pair of shorts. We'll do the shorts first. So these are a pair of knit shorts called the short number one by my favorite things knitwear. It's the pair of shorts that I've only ever seen that I'm like, yeah, I need knit shorts in my life. Uh, that's this pattern. This pattern is a fingering weight short. Are you guys seeing a pattern in terms of what I like? I really like fingering weight that 
has a wide rib pattern and it's knit bottom up. Supposedly the pattern gives you um, detailed information in terms of how to vary the length how you would like them and the recommended yarn, yarn for this one is knitting for olive pure silk. I don't know how I feel about silk shorts. I think they would feel really nice but I'm not entirely sure how they would wear. I, f I don't know I feel like if I was to make these I probably would make them in a merino or like the cotton merino but needless to say the recommended yarn is knitting for olive pure silk on US 6 needles so size 4 millimeter which is quite a big needle I think for a fingering weight yarn if I'm not mistaken I think usually they're knit more on like three three and a half maybe you get like a really nice drape because of that the sizing for this pattern ranges from extra small to extra extra large and so the hip circumference is approximately 90 centim 99 centimeters to 140 centimeters. What I think really solidifies this as like a cute summer outfit for me is that in the pattern photo, she pairs it with the camisole number five. No, camisole number six. It's a similar ribbed v-neck cami that she knit in the same like yarn colorway, if not the same yarn and it's so cute. I just, like I can see someone lounging around the house in the summertime in this outfit and I would be like, that's freaking adorable, you know? Yeah. I don't know how practical knit shorts would be personally, but if you're looking for a pair of knit shorts, I think these ones are great. Not that I've knit them up, but based on what I've read, I think they're great. Okay, the last one is nor the best, nor the worst. I, these were in kind of like a random order. And the last one is the Criss Cross Top by Pearl Soho. And this pattern kind of falls more along the Luna tee that I was talking about where it's this really like classic looking top. And it's another, it's like a tank top. It has this really like classically clean twist near the like bust area. And then the rest of it is kind of just like plain. I, I think it's in reverse stockinette, so it's not even stockinette. And I think this shirt is like a really nice like work professional summer top, if you know what I mean. This is a free pattern and it's an Aran weight sleeveless top, like I mentioned, done on size four millimeter needles. The pattern itself recommends using Pearl Soho worsted twist, which I don't think is the yarn that they use anymore. I think any kind of worsted or iron weight yarn would be really nice for the shirt which maybe gives me a thought that it might be too hot for the summertime so I feel like some sort of plant-based fiber worsted weight yarn would be good for this one. I took a look at this pattern because it was free and this is knit bottom up. You start the front hem, you work the back hem, and then you connect them and knit in the round until you get to the armholes I believe in which you would split again for front and back finish them off and then connect them at the top at the shoulder seams so it's a really interesting construction in my opinion I've never seen that I've never actually done anything bottom up so maybe that's a very normal like shirt construction this shirt while it is worsted weight I think the construction of it being a tank top, it gives me very summer vibes. So if your vibe is more of like clean, like sophisticated looking summer outfits, I think this would be a nice addition to your wardrobe. So there you have it, the seven patterns that have been haunting my brain. I think I'm excited about them all, to be totally honest. I have plans for one, like I have immediate plans for one, immediate. Um, I still don't know when I'm going to start the Luna tee, but I have plans for that one because I have the yarn. Well, honestly, I kind of like doing this video is probably bad because now I want to do all of them and I don't have the time or the money <laughs> to do all of them, at least not right now. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some inspiration. If you guys have any summer patterns that are haunting you or living rent free in your brain, let me know what they are below because I'd love to have more, <laughs> even though I probably shouldn't. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.